They're called everything from executive protectors to bullet catchers, but you probably know them best as the Secret Service. Every day, these men and women put their lives on the line to ensure the safety of high-ranking people, from the President of the United States to elected officials and visiting dignitaries. But the U.S. isn't alone in having a security detail for their political figureheads. Most countries have a Secret Service equivalent with a staff just as determined to keep their leaders safe, even employing some rather unusual tactics in the line of duty. And we're going to examine 11 of them that just might set off more than a few warning lights in your brain. Now, assume your position by the motorcade and let's mobilize for the 11 insane tactics that Secret Services always use. One tactic that seems insane for an organization in charge of protecting someone important is that the Secret Service isn't all that secret. In fact, a lot of them are out there for all to see. Some of them are extremely visible, like the 12 North Korean agents escorting the limo containing its dictator, Kim Jong-un. So noticeable is that protection force, they're almost celebrities themselves, especially when seen running alongside the limo when it speeds up. But what's with being seen and looking obvious with the dark suits and shades with that telltale earpiece? That visibility acts as a deterrent to potential criminals that they're out there ready to stop you person to person from carrying out that evil deed. It's what agents call working the rope, as they're eyeing the crowd for anything suspicious. In fact, if you've seen one Secret Service agent in the crowd, chances are they've already sized you up. They're extensively trained to detect whether anyone has a weapon and even if a person of interest is left or right-handed. As for the sunglasses, it's to not only hide from the crowd where an agent is looking, but those shades are also handy if someone tries to throw a liquid in their eyes. Being highly visible is evidently important for an even more insane purpose, and that is to block any harmful projection heading towards a dignitary. It's obviously the scariest part about being a Secret Service agent. In the U.S., Secret Service agents aren't obligated to take an oath to sacrifice their lives for the president. However, they are taught to focus on the job, including going to great lengths to stop an attempt on the president's life. In 1981, Secret Service agent Timothy McCarthy was guarding President Ronald Reagan when shots rang out as the leader was being escorted to his limousine. McCarthy blocked a shot by would-be assassin John Hinckley while another agent managed to quickly shove the president into the car. Taking a bullet in the abdomen, McCarthy survived and even resumed duty after he recovered. After retiring in 1993, the agent recalled never regretting his decision to jump in front of the bullet's path to save the president's life. In his book At Arm's Length, former Secret Service agent Dan Emmett wrote that it takes a special person to guard the president. He added that it also helps that the training is extensive. Recruits are even shot with fake bullets and receive other forms of conditioning to the point where reactions to a worst-case scenario eventually become automatic. Another crazy measure is that the Secret Service also doubles as a portable blood bank. Everywhere the president goes, agents ensure that whatever direction taken is always within 10 minutes of a medical center to deliver whatever services are needed should the commander-in-chief get hit. Each center near the motorcade route is also patrolled by an agent who screened the staff to ensure no sabotage for when saving the president's life becomes priority number one. There's also, secretly hidden inside the presidential limo, some containers of the leader's blood as well as plasma. As for how it's administered, a small detachment within the Secret Service called the Presidential Protection Division handles that critical task. This is a highly specialized unit that has extensive backgrounds on how to administer blood to the president to keep the subject alive. They're also well-versed in other life-saving procedures they often refer to as 10-minute medicine. It's a series of protocols used to cover any kind of medical attack on the president to keep him alive until the limo arrives at a medical facility. The next feature, extensively used by the Secret Service isn't so much a tactic, but a valuable piece of protective inventory that agents lovingly call the Beast. It's the limousine used by the President, which has been modified over the years, but most extensively since 1963, when President Kennedy was assassinated in a convertible while in Dallas. Since then, convertibles have been banned from the vehicle list, while the limos have undergone drastic modifications over the years. The latest incarnation of the Beast was unveiled in 2018. It's a Cadillac sedan, but not one that anyone can buy. This one features a sophisticated suspension system that allows the driver to make fast turns and maneuvers, 
to dodge projectiles and evade any vehicles bent on harming the president. Aside from the mandatory bulletproof glass and heavy armor plating, the Cadillac also has a built-in flame suppression system to keep passengers from suffering in the case of a firefight or explosion. The car's body is mounted on a heavily reinforced truck frame to handle the armor weight. Tires made from Kevlar also ensures that the tires are still usable even after taking multiple bullet hits. And if that's not enough, the interior has its own biosphere to protect against any armaments used in biological, chemical, and even nuclear war. Talk about a safe ride. Then there's what just might be the most invasive tactic employed by the Secret Service, and it's one that comes with the territory for any commander-in-chief. It also makes us wonder why anyone wants to run for president in the first place. In case you haven't guessed, it all has to do with going to the bathroom. No president goes to the executive biffy unoccupied. Every time nature calls, the president isn't the only one who has to respond, as an agent is always there to accompany the leader to the lavatory. The next tactic might not be insane so much as it more borders on the absurd. Like any agency that is bent on protecting its leader, they tend to use code words as part of their operations and the Secret Service is no exception. They have code words for everything, like the White House, which they call the Castle, or the Capitol Building, referred to as the Punch Bowl. But what they call the very people they protect can be highly amusing. Until the season premiere of the NBC drama The West Wing in 1999, few people knew that POTUS was the acronym that the Secret Service used frequently. It's an acronym for President of the United States, but as for the people who held that title, well, let's just say the Secret Service probably could use a laugh once in a while. Previous examples of code words or nicknames include Searchlight for Richard Nixon, Deacon for Jimmy Carter, and Eagle for Bill Clinton. George H.W. Bush was dubbed Timberwolf, while his son George W. was called Trailblazer. As for John F. Kennedy, the agents referred to him as Lancer, a reference to Sir Lancelot and the fabled Camelot vibe inside the White House at the time. Ronald Reagan's Hollywood cowboy demeanor earned him the nickname Rawhide, while Barack Obama, who fought for change, was dubbed Renegade. As for the current president, well, the Secret Service mysteriously gave him the nickname Mogul. So far, we've discovered that extensive training in protecting the president involves an eye for detail, driving maneuvers, absolute bravery when it comes to catching a bullet, and medical training to add 10 minutes to a potentially dying president's life. Now here comes the nitty gritty, especially when it comes to actually having to fight. Extensive weapons training is high on the list when it comes to grooming Secret Service recruits, as is hand-to-hand -hand combat. But what the agency's tactics are in the fisticuffs department certainly borders from insane. It's a martial arts form of self-defense known as Sistema, which was developed by America's sworn enemy, Russia. It's also the preferred fighting method used by the Federal Protection Service, Russia's equivalent to the Secret Service, who are assigned to guard the safety of Vladimir Putin. But there's some sensibility in involved in going the Sistema route. As far as martial arts are concerned, it's more scientifically based as opposed to the spiritual approach of Asian fighting disciplines. Sistema is also flexible in that it doesn't employ any specific moves. Instead, the fighting style is one that is not only easy to learn, but is applicable to any body type of opponent. It's a critical technique, especially if an agent is wounded, as Sistema only requires about a quarter of a body's physical strength to get the job done. And when an agent is in an unpredictable scenario, this martial arts technique is a handy fighting tool to use. It should be quite evident that to the Secret Service, no threat is too small, which is why they take even the mildest of utterances to heart. That especially applies to threats made on social media. Even a threatening tweet made in jest will result in the Secret Service showing up at your door within days if not hours. They have an arsenal of intelligence technology at their disposal and will go so far as to check out your family, professional, medical, and other backgrounds. And given that such threats are against the law, don't count on them letting you off easy. But it doesn't stop at the electronic medium. The Secret Service also has a secret weapon to find anyone who snail mails a threat to the president. It's a gigantic ink database that can trace the type of ink being used, its manufacturer, distributor, and outlet where that ink was purchased. With thousands of samples being stored, a forensic study of the ink on the document and access to the database can almost pinpoint the location of that ink, even if it was from a ballpoint pen. 
and once that's narrowed down, it's only a matter of time before they catch the writer. Culinary safety is a tactic that goes back to the time of ancient Rome and has been adapted over the centuries, but the Secret Service has food security down to an art form these days. Unlike the olden days when a Caesar or Senator had someone taste what was on his plate before a meal could commence, today's safeguards are a lot more sophisticated. Agents intensely scrutinize the chefs in the White House who make the first family's meals, while a carefully selected Navy chef is responsible for presidential menus when the Commander-in-Chief is traveling abroad. And even if the President has a hankering for fast food, it's inspected by the Secret Service from delivery to destination, presumably while it's still warm. However, the White House, or whatever hotel the President is staying in, is never the intended destination. The Secret Service will place the order for a pizza, for example, and have it delivered to a nearby address where the pie is carefully examined, before any set of presidential teeth chomp down on a slice. And if anyone wants to deliver a food item as a gift to the president, forget it. There's no way it'll get to the intended recipient. Another tactic is similar to what a football team might do after a game. The Secret Service is nuts about reviewing videos after an event, especially one involving a motorcade. That's a tactic adopted after the Kennedy assassination, when much of it was caught on film by Abraham Zapruder, who was a bystander in the crowd the moment shots rang out. Because the Sapruder film was instrumental in analyzing clues that led to the arrest of alleged shooter Lee Harvey Oswald, it also revealed flaws in the security detail. To this day, the video is carefully scrutinized to see which bases were covered or which weak points were vulnerable to ensure more blanket security the next time the president emerges in public. Not only are tactics reviewed, faces of onlookers are all examined for any elements of suspicion or familiarity should any of them attend a future appearance with an unpleasant agenda in mind. Footage reviews have also been adopted by the Secret Service as a mandatory requirement in a recruit's training. Finally, we would like to look at a tactic that the Secret Service strictly orders its agents not to follow. It's such a menial tactic, but just as critical as the rest. Simply put, they're not allowed to carry items while on duty. When Secret Service agents are working, all hands must be on deck. In other words, both hands must be free in case of a surprise attack or life-threatening situation. That's all for 11 insane tactics the Secret Services always use. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to The Richest.